What is good, good people? You are now listening to another episode of At The Plate with Danny Foxworth. I am your humble narrator, Danny Foxworth. And once again, we're joined by an extremely special guest. I had the pleasure of being a guest on this guy and his in his uh his co-stars podcast, which is entitled yes. The Hilltop Glove Podcast over this past weekend. And while they were interviewing me, me and the guy that's in the building with me right now that was providing the interview questions, he started throwing me these baseball questions. And unbeknownst <laughs> to me, he enjoys baseball as much as I do. And we started to nerd out. And I yeah, was like, man. oh, I need to get you on my podcast. And the deal was sealed. And here we are. So this man is one fourth of the Hilltop Glove podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. DJ and what is in the building and what what's good, bro? Man, everything's good, man. I'm feeling good today. Um, like I said, just got back from the gym, man. Got some work in. Had a good Friday today. Got my teeth clean and stuff like that. So oh, man. I'm ready to rock and roll, ready to talk some baseball, um, some stuff about, you know, things that I like, our podcasts and stuff like that. And it's always a pleasure to be on other folks' podcasts because we talk to so many people. Um, this is one thing my brother's big about. He's like, hey, we got to make sure that people get to know who we are, who we are as well. And so it's always nice to share and break bread with with, with uh, brethren. And so I'm happy that you um, asked me to come on. Yes, sir. Pleasure is all mine. And again, it's, you talk about getting your teeth clean. People don't realize that's that's <laughs> paramount, bro. Like the like the adage. It goes, is. It's just like that old adage. If you ignore your teeth, they'll go away. Exactly. Oh, my Lord. Um, There's this thing that... uh. What's the guy's name? Mess his name. Say the guy. Steve Harvey always talks about investing money in your teeth. And he says, man, I'd rather have good teeth and no car than a car and bad teeth. Because that's it. Your teeth, you eat with your teeth. Um, your teeth are paramount. People are gonna see them. It's how you present yourself. Yeah. And um, just like they tell you, man, a pet, like if you have a pet, a dog, a cat, or anything like that, if they have bad teeth, normally that leads to their death because they can't eat. A good point. So when you think about it, it's like, okay, yeah, it's important. You got to have to take care of your teeth. And I'm not even going to lie, man. I've, I've actually, I was really bad at it because not that I have bad teeth. I have great teeth, good dental. Jeans are good, I guess. I'm lucky. Got good jeans. But I never really paid attention to it um, that much uh, until my wife, she was serious about me getting my teeth clean and stuff all the time. Make sure you go to the dentist, get that stuff taken care of. So um, recently I've been on it, man. I've been on my stuff taking care. Never had any issues. No gingivitis issues no no halitosis no <laughs> no bad breath <laughs> nothing key. like that teeth that's are key. fine they're healthy but um it, it's always good to go and get them checked up 100 percent, man yes, sir. kudos to you for being on top of your game so now <laughs> the hilltop glove podcast how did that come about all right so and i will say this it's a little cliche it's just like what happened to everybody during this period but he had this big worldwide event called the pandemic that happened in 2020 and here's the interesting thing about it uh my brother kevin and i skip as we like to call him skip and uh, we actually started <laughs> discussing this prior to the pandemic actually at the end of the fall of 2019 uh, because we were in different cities and we had always done music work together and work with different artists and etc on either mixing mastering music um I'll, i dj so i'll scratch and put some little um some nice little sounds on there he does a lot of the production side so he's making the beats um but we we're like hey man there's some we want to do something for ourselves and he had been recently working with other uh, how would you say radio hosts personalities producing and doing things for them in the same kind of realm of a podcast uh shows and stuff like that and he realized we don't do that stuff for ourselves. And it's interesting because he's like, we got, first of all, we have the skills. We, we, we have the personality. We know how to do it. We have audio engineering background. So mm -hmm. audio is no problem. We can get that done. He is re he had, he was recently um, becoming very adept at camera operation as well. He had taken some classes and was going through uh, photography and stuff like that. So he was getting that under his belt as well. And he was like, hey, man, why don't we do something for ourselves? We service everybody else, right? All the time. We we basically make sure other people's dreams are able to come to fruition, but we aren't doing it for ourselves. And he was like, hey, why don't we, we have these conversations because Kevin and I, we're talkers, as you already know, 
I'll talk you to death, man. If you let me, I'll talk you to death. <laughs> like we'll be up here. We can talk for the next two hours if you want to, but um, we have great conversations and the conversations aren't trivial conversations. We're pretty intelligent guys. We read books, we investigate. And so the conversations we have, they're developed, they're actually dialogues. They aren't just, you know, regular conversations, but, um, and recently we started something arbitrary conversations, which is funny, arbitrary conversations, uh, where we discuss and we actually record the things that we talk about so people can hear how our minds operate and how they work. But, um, the stuff comes from places of logic. And so what we wanted to do was to create a, a network style podcast networking. And this is the reason why Kevin and I, we have both worked in a counseling, um, setting, And him more so having a lot of training with the state, working on job development, career development. I worked in in a university setting. And one thing that we always understood was that networking is important, also as well in the entertainment industry. And in order to network, you have to do what? Sit down, meet, and talk to people in depth. And it's hard to do that normally in the situations that we had been in at a show, um, at a, a, a large scale event, yeah. somewhere loud, dark, et cetera. And so we weren't having the type of conversations that we wanted to have. And our big thing was, hey, how do we create a, let, let, do some hip hop. How do we create a cozy condition? Because that's our mission. <laughs> the, so that we could sit down and have these conversations that could develop and turn into something that was fruitful and that had substance. And so what we aim to do with the podcast when we were talking about developing it was uh, for millennials specifically, creating an idea of a digital Rolodex where you could go back, listen to these conversations about things, topics, um, how would you say, endeavors that you were interested in and actually get gems on how you could actually do it and be successful doing it as a millennial. Because one of the things we were discussing in these conversations that we're having at the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020 was that there were no roadmaps, guidelines, or books for what we were entering into in this new generation because we were moving from a strictly analog world into a digital world Mm -hmm. and nobody had a playbook. We didn't know how you were going to uh, be successful as an entrepreneur, specifically in a digital world. Back in the day, there was a certain way that you made money. There was a certain way that you produced businesses. Brick and mortar was a thing. And now with the changes based on technology, access to capital and et cetera, there are totally different ways that you can go about doing things. Like, for instance, you don't even have to get a degree anymore. You can get a certificate. And get the same job that somebody with a degree could get. And it's it's interesting that people, you know, we don't have this as a roadmap. We're still trying to do things like the Stone Age. And so we wanted to, to have these discussions, have folks come on our podcast, talk about how they figured things out, keep that information in a file. And the reason that's the reason why we did a podcast, because a podcast is different from live um, audio and um, live events and et cetera. We're trying to create something that can be documented and held so you can go and download it later mm-hmm. for consumption at any time that you want. So it's almost like picking up a book, book on tape or whatnot. You get it, listen to it. All right, this person, they're a solicitor. I want to know how a solicitor does their job. I want to know how they got interested in doing this because we've talked to these people. Um, we talked to coroners. We've talked to um, representatives. We've talked to teachers, uh, doctors, et cetera, all kinds of cool people, man. People, are inter- people who make interesting art uh, like this lady she makes dolls like sit off a toy story and really? <laughs> so we talked to all these people about yeah man and she's really cool Miss God, she's so cool man um and we met her in charlotte and so we get to talk to these people dig into their minds figure out how this stuff works how do they finance themselves how do they figure out to how do they balance time to do what they love and also be a parent um a husband a wife um a daughter a son or have other interests as well on top of that because another thing for millennials is a lot of us we job hop we don't stay in one one position for a really long time and we like to do multiple things at the same time that's different from the past and so we were like hey we're going to create this situation and in doing so we'll create a network because if you want to talk to these people you listen to our podcast, you drop our name. Hey, I heard about you from the Hilltop Glove podcast. Bing, it allows you to then open a the door. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of um, back in the olden world 
Like I'm talking when I say olden world, I mean like prior to 1200 AD, like olden world. When you wanted to travel between different lands, you would have to have what's called a password. It was a literal word that you would have to tell the people when you arrived at the shore or at a juncture that was held by military to keep yourself from being murdered and that would allow for you to then travel into their lands. And so basically now people can use our podcast um, as a password to networking and then also use the information that we have on our podcast systems themselves. Um, and so that was the main reason why we created it. And then from that, we have our other two, the other two parts of the uh, podcast, Tamaya and Mike. Mike, we've known forever. Um, he's been our friend since, like you said, childhood friends, like since we were in high school, um, when we first moved up to the Midlands and we were just fin- figuring out our way. He was one of the first people that we ran into, good friends, along with other folks that we met um, around here. And he's always been tight with us from day one um, down since since Motown, like for real, hard, solid. And he's really good at uh, what he does. Uh, he works in technology. He does building of websites and et cetera. Um, and he works for nonprofits. And he's a good guy. He has a good heart. And so it's always good to have somebody like that on your team because he really assists us with certain questions and concerns that we have about how we need to do certain operational things. And we don't have to, per se, go outside of our circle to do it. Um, and then for Tamaya, Tamaya actually was with Kevin working on some of those projects that led him to the idea of, hey, we're working for everybody else. Let's do it for ourselves. And um, she was doing uh, photography and videography. She models and et cetera, uh, does art as well uh, and draw paints and all that good stuff. <clears throat> and so when they actually finished up on a podcast that didn't do well, her thing was, I want to do something that works, that's successful. I don't want to <laughs> keep failing. Yeah. And so we bought her on board because we're like, we aren't going to fail because, uh, Kevin and I, whenever we work on something, we put our mind to it, it's going to get done. And we have that type of, not say like hard nail work ethic, but for a period of time, we were raised by my grandmother. And my grandmother is from the Great Depression era, like old school. And so she taught us hard work ethic. Like we know we have to batten down the hatches and handle business. It's not hard for us to do that. Like if we got to get something done, we make time and that's what you're supposed to do. We were taught that. So yeah. uh, and one thing we wanted to promise to our folks that joined on with us is that we were, we're going to make this successful. And we created a, we had a three and a five year business plan. And then we add on to that three and a five years and we've been working it out ever since. And we are actually ahead of schedule, which is a beautiful thing. So um, I was happy about that foray because one of the things too, that we always talk about is that we hate when when something's very very popular and you're jumping into it as we discussed on our podcast with you is you Mm want to make sure you have a niche and so we didn't want to do salacious journalism we weren't trying to do gotcha questions we weren't trying to bring people in to talk about topics that weren't of substantive manner and so just like with you what you do and that's why i like what you do it's dope it's something that's necessary and it it feels good to listen to it. Like I haven't listened to any of your content and felt bad listening to it. Like I was eating junk wow. food. Thank it was you. all, it was good stuff, man. Yeah. So <laughs> I got to give you props on that because it's hard for people to figure that out in this, in this landscape that we're in, because everybody in this, in a way is almost, it's, they're chasing a dollar a lot of times, not realizing that you should get the dollars to chase you. Yeah. Um, and so Slow and steady wins, wins the race. And uh, that's what we're trying to do with our podcast. And we want to really make sure that we give people uh, something that will matter to them in the future and something that we can leave as a gem and a lasting stone. So, you know what? First time I ever talked on a podcast was on these guys' podcast. And it made me feel good. I didn't feel like I was threatened. Nobody was trying to give me weird questions. I was able to get my point across. Somebody was able to learn from it. And that's one thing we always hear from people that listen to our podcast. You know, I learned something from podcasts. Matter of fact, I'm going to have my daughter listen to it. I'm going to have my son listen to it as well. I think it's something that that they can actually tune into. And it's not just um, junk food. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what we're aiming to do. Man, and you, you, you tied it up so well because... It's always interesting to me, just like like what you said with the um, people putting their their other folks onto it. There's some yeah. friends of mine that I didn't realize were listening to my podcast, and they say <laughs> that their kids listen to it. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, age kids. That's like, how you know you're doing your job. Yeah, I'm like, man, <laughs> one fan a day. 
yeah that's it one fan a day one at a time infect infect the masses and that's what i want to do like uh because we we started like i said we started our i guess it's like an alter alternate content um our talks that we want to start having and making sure that people can have access to um and one of the things about it was we we want to make sure that there is content for people to get that they can feel good listening to yeah. And one thing I always know, and we've, we've talked about this, my brother and I in the past, is that the good people usually get the whack stuff. And what I mean by that is like, <laughs> when you look at music, the good rappers get the wackest beats. They don't usually have the flyest stuff. And they usually have to work very hard in order to attain the same levels of exposure as the people who are technically doing a lot of the negative stuff. Negative, they get the flyest beats. Chains be looking good, they riding down the street, flashing just like a drug dealer back in the 1960s um, or 1970s. No different. Like the people who are out here doing a lot of things that are immoral in our societies, and not to jump on a soapbox, but this is what it is. They usually get the the lion's share of the shine. And our thing is, yo, how can we? And this goes back to, of course, I can't help it. I'm D, I DJ, so I always think about stuff in music terms. But with with Lupe Fiasco and him. And his line of albums and what he was trying to do with the cool, the idea of the cool, making the uncool cool and vice versa, because he could realize coming from where he was in Chicago that the things that were plaguing uh, the community and stuff were related to what people thought were cool. So he was like, can I make the things that aren't cool, cool so we can start building? And um, that's what I like to see. So if you have something like that, push it. And I know I heard Tyler, the creator, talking about this one time, and it was a really good point he made about stuff that you're making that you love, right? You're doing something you don't think it's popping yet, right? Keep pushing it. He said, man, this album that everybody loves so much, and I, I think he was talking about, um, I'm trying to remember the, the album. I know it's the one where he's on the front looking crazy. He was like, he, look, he looks crazy. He looks like Matt, um, the, the comic book, the Mad TV comic book stuff, the Mad TV. But um, he was talking about he was pushing that album for three years, and he's a known artist. He didn't make anything new. Mm -hmm. The new stuff, and he didn't put it out. He just kept pushing the same album, repeat, 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 pushing the same stuff out there until people picked it up. Eventually, it will get it. it. They will come to it. So you make your content. You stay in your lane where you're at. You keep, you don't change it for no reason if you aren't hurting anybody and you keep pushing it. And that's, that's part of how you win is that consistency. Um, stay into it, that stick to it attitude. And again, I, I learned a lot of that from uh, my grandmother, my uncles, my aunts um, coming from that older generation. Um, I really did pick that up from them and I see how it does. It does lead to, um, to positivity. And that's one thing I like about baseball is a lot of sticking to it, keep pushing at it because stuff just doesn't come overnight, man. Um, and, and that's the reason why I like your podcast. I like hearing you talk about the about baseball and, and people's understanding of it and why they like it and et cetera. And that's one of the things about this, that game that's different from other sports that I watch. And I love sports. I love all sports. Um, I like bull ride, man. I, I, <laughs> I sit here. I sit, look, I'm on the website. I follow, I follow the rodeo people. I got my favorite rodeo wranglers and I follow their little things that they do. And they got stats and everything. And it shows how much money they make and stuff like that. And I think it's cool. I love sports, man. But um, yeah all around nice and make sure y'all check out the hilltop glove podcast they're on all streaming Please platforms do. it's man i i cannot say enough great things about this podcast and yours truly was a guest on there and that'll be dropping very soon so now let's get yes. into some, let's get into the meat and potatoes here let's talk some baseball so what were yeah. dj and what's earliest yeah. memories of the sport all right, so actually, I was, again, I'm waiting to talk about this to other people. I'm sounding crazy, but I'm waiting go. to talk about this type of stuff. But um, so with baseball, uh, and I know we were talking about it on our podcast, but it was my first. That was the first sport. That was the first sport we played. Like I mean, I can remember being a, ch a child and um have my little uh, slugger hats and my little Oshkosh on. And throwing the ball, hitting the bat, and running around, and stuff like that. And of course, you know, parents will give us like um. It's the reason why I'm a Patriots fan. They give us little, uh, buy us little clothes and stuff with the different um, teams and stuff on them. And I know, like, like my father, he's a Yankees guy, so it is what it is. He's a Yankees guy. Okay. Uh, but he, you know, they would get us that stuff, and and they follow sports because they were from the city. They were from New Haven, and so they grew up in that area. And and 
sports are big. So all sports, they just watch sports, all sports. This is how we lo- learn to love everything that was going on. And so um, with baseball, my thing was, it was something that I saw played. And that's why I think I became like so enthralled with it and fell in love with it. Um, as a child, uh, when we used to go, um, when I was with my dad, specifically in summers in new and um, when we moved to the South in North Carolina, and this is, um, this is interesting because when I was in New Haven, we used to play stickball, but in the South, we would be in Wilmington and we would go to Elizabeth city in Elizabeth city. When we used to go there to go with, um, to be at some folks, um, it was my, my father's, um, second wife, his, uh, grandmother's house. We would go down there. Her grandmother would be down there. And, um, we would go watch minor league black baseball Talk about in, in the, in the dirt. Oh man, I'm telling you, look, so you got to be, and, and, and it was, it was so cool because you could go there, you could touch the people, you could talk to them, smell everything, the smell of the grass, the dirt, watch the people throw the ball, hitting the ball, playing bases. Um, it was just so cool. And like, we were little kids, we run around, get our little food and stuff like that. But I was very attentive. And so I would sit here and watch the game and we would watch our home team play against these other teams coming into town. Uh, they would do double headers and stuff like that. And I was just so amazed at how athletic the people were, first of all, but how good they were at the game. So, I mean, how hard they were pitching, the hit, the contact on the bat, watching them go and snag, um, steal home runs from people. Like I said, my favorite part of baseball is defense. <laughs> I like watching people hit. It's fun. I love the offense, right? But I love defense because – it's it, it takes so much skill. I used to love watching uh, folks with really good glove glove game and just watch how they used to uh, work the field and stuff like that. And um, we would go and watch these games from sun up to sun down, and then we would go home, get up the next day, and then mimic them. We would go and we yep. play ourselves, and we would try to do what we saw and emulate it. And what that led it to is, as I got older. We just kept playing baseball. Uh, that was the big thing. Like, yeah, football is around. We do football and stuff like that. And I knew Jordan exists, right? I knew who he was. I knew he existed. But I wasn't even paying attention to Jordan. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Like, it was baseball first. Everything else was second. And so we would get up in the summers. Um, if we weren't going there to go watch baseball, we would get up in the summers. Um, my stepbrother, some of them would play organized ball. So we'd go watch the organized ball games. And they would come back and we'd go play sandlot ball. We'd yeah. either go to a field and play. Or we would play in a cul-de-sac. It didn't matter. We'd find a place. We'd make our bases. we bring. We had all of our own gear. we bring our gear out, and we'd play baseball. we break windows, <laughs> deck cars, <laughs> whatever it was. We didn't care. We were going to play baseball. And we were playing from morning until, until sundown. Have to be called inside, take a shower, eat dinner, go right to sleep. Why? Because we're going to get back up in the morning and go play baseball. Do it all over again. We were watching yep. baseball. Yeah, man. Like, we were, we were too much into it. We watched baseball movies. Um, everything was baseball. We watched the games when the games were on. If we were allowed to be in the house, because, you know, back in the, in the old school, you got to get out of the house. Outside. It's time to come yeah. back in. Yeah, you got to be at the house. Yeah, you got to be outside. And that was one thing we liked about baseball is that it would be all day. And we liked the fact that it was all day. You can play pickup basketball, you can play some football, but you got to stop and you got to take a break, right? With baseball, we're playing between, playing between. Yeah, you got innings, take a little inning break, come back, keep playing, keep playing. The game would go as long as we wanted it to go sometimes. Sometimes we we make our own little rules. We stop at night then, and we we, we go in extra innings today, yeah. and we would keep playing, right? And so we became very skilled at it. Um, I know one of the funniest stories I was telling you um, was – Man, we watched League of Their Own and made us crazy. We decided that we were going to play with no gloves. And, we, <laughs> and we're up here, we're up here turning, 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 turning pitches, hitting double plays, barehanded, kind of grab the ground. And they were looking at us like these little, these little kids are crazy. But that's just how much we love the game. So anything we saw, we were going to emulate it. We had our, our, of course, we had our favorite players and stuff, um, and, and we would follow them. Um, we played we had uh baseball video games that's the game we were playing with come like if we weren't playing baseball video games we were playing mario or mortal kombat if it wasn't this is that this is old school so it'd be mario mortal kombat baseball video game 
when Aladdin came out, though, for some reason, we played some Aladdin, too. We liked the Aladdin game. I don't know why, but we liked the Aladdin game because I guess Disney was big. But outside of that, baseball, man, Golden Glove, man. So we'd be playing this game all the time, and we would follow. We just follow the progression of everything. So the biggest thing was I always just wanted to play um, actually organized. And I never got a chance to play organized ball, which is interesting because – I watched my stepbrothers play, start off with T-ball, then machine pitch, um, then from machine pitch to um, coach pitch. Uh, and then from there, of course, middle and high school. And one of my eldest brothers, he actually got, he played um, baseball um, in high school, but he really liked football. And I think this is probably what helped turn the ties a little bit. He became a running back and we used to like what going on. We want to go see play, play football and stuff like that. Right. Um, and so football became a big thing too, but baseball was always there. And I remember when I moved to uh, South Carolina um, and I started going to school in South Carolina, my classmates, we had um, baseball trading card games that we played. And we read these books about baseball trading in cards. And we would watch and follow the games with our cards and keep stats and marks. So when every time we, we'd meet up in, in class before class and check where everything was and at lunch, we check what things are. And this is old school. So we have to wait for the games to happen and go home and watch the news and or catch a newspaper. This is how it was. So we can catch yep. the stats and see what was going on with our players. And we even to the point that we, I mean, we idolize these people and, and to the point that we thought we were these people. So I had, um, <laughs> I used to hang out with Chipper Jones and Ryan Klesko um, <laughs> and I was Ken Griffey Jr. And we'd be, <laughs> we'd go to class and at recess, we'd go out and we'd play and we have our little gym. That's what we did. And we would just play baseball and we would follow these players to the T. Like we were not, we were not looking at anything else. There was nothing else that mattered. We had no Pokemon. Forget Pokemon. We came in no Pokemon. It was baseball. Um, and so just following that, that growth. And I remember, um, the, the summer that what's my guy's name and messed up this is sad. I'm saying I mess this up when Derek Jeter stepped into the, into the realm blew our minds. Yeah. Cause first of all, he was young and we had never seen like somebody, his age be so good so soon. Right. And so that even, it made our, nope, this is the best thing that I've ever seen since sliced bread. And at this time, my brother was trying to get me to watch. Um, he was trying to get me into basketball because he was watching his, um, he was watching his Utah Jazz lose to the Chicago Bulls. And so he was trying to get me into basketball. And I had a team, you know, Seattle, because I'm following Seattle, so I was following Seattle team, so I'm following the Sonics. My man, um, me and too. And then they had that year, they went 96. Yeah, that's my that's my team. So that's my team, even though they stole them. That's my team. Um, and so I was just like, okay, well, I'm going to root for them. Um, and I'm following my team, and et cetera. But I'm still like, no, this is baseball. So I'm watching my team, my Mariners do their thing. And we had some good, some good years, right? So I was happy because, like, I was getting my basketball team. And my baseball team were doing their thing. So I was happy, right? I was good with it. Um, but then when we hit the 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 slugger period, the steroid era, and I'm not angry about the steroid era. I'm happy about the steroid era because it made other people watch baseball with me. Finally, exactly. Outside of just like the normal every day. You know what I'm saying? They would watch it with me. Um, so when we had Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa doing their thing, and this is and this is interesting. I thought this was always funny. Barry Bonds wasn't really at that time. It wasn't a hit. He wasn't really in that, that discussion at that time. He came later. And I thought this was always interesting, but on Saturdays, WGN Cubs games. Yep. My mama would watch them with me because really? Sammy's about to play. Yeah. Ah. This is what I'm saying. This is how, this is how big, and I know people hate on the steroid era, but this is how big it was. Like you had, you had this, this mixed race woman, watching this with her sons because she was like they like it and plus sammy's up there and sammy look good so i didn't care <laughs> i was like so she already had a she, she had a reason runs. yeah she had a reason so we're up here watching these baseball games and she let us watch our sports because she knew we were really into it um and plus it, like she said you aren't getting in trouble you're in here watching the game and you're just gonna go out there and go play baseball so that's fine so we're watching him and mark mcguire go at it 
Um, Ken Griffey is even trying to go at it with him, and that's my guy. So I'm watching him go and hit home runs. But I know Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa are doing something else. They look a little too big, right? Even as a child, yeah. even as a <laughs> child, I knew because, like I said, I'm following stats, right? So I know like progressions, and I'm watching. I'm like, yo, so you used to play for the Oakland A's, and yeah, you were a slugger, but you weren't doing that, Mark. Yeah, and I'm looking. <laughs> And I'm looking at the changes. So I knew something was up. And my guy was still looking normal. He had the same build that he had before. And I'm like, all right, even with Barry Bonds, I knew I'm like, ah, ah he used to be, yeah, ah, you're a little guy. Now you, you, you're a little too, too stocky. But um, watching that, so no problem. That was, I was, I was enjoying it. And then, of course, my dad being a Yankees fan, come on, man, that's that era. You're talking about the Yankees coming into there. So they're hitting. So I'm, now we're watching baseball as a fan. Everybody watching baseball. Yeah. Because my mom and my dad, they they did separate. And so when I went to go live with my dad, the cool thing about it was this was, I mean, you want to watch sports? Cool. Let's all watch sports together. So we're sitting out here watching full series all every time. Like, all right, so we may not be able to watch it during the whole time because you know, you gotta work and stuff like that. So yeah, but during the playoffs, time was put aside. We're gonna sit down, we're gonna watch all these series, we're gonna watch all the games together, we watch all the games everything we got to watch all all of the the comebacks the uh the heroics you got to see everything and it was fun to watch it and see the um the camaraderie that it just that it bought to the house of watching the yankees do their thing even though i'm not a yankees fan because i just know my dad he likes the Yankees, so i'm like i'm i'm rooting for my dad's team my team ain't in it so if my team ain't in i'm gonna go with my dad's team um but except for one year except for one year we, we was getting older and we was trying to be, we we're kind of being, uh, we were being petty. And so when the Red Sox did what they did to them, and it was 0304. Yep. We were, pet, we were petty. We, we were petty. And we were teasing and talking trash and all that. <laughs> so, you know, we we're in high school now. Yeah. We got to come up against my dad a little bit. And so we were talking trash at that one. But normally, you know, we're going to root for you if it's what it is. Um, but then after that, going into college, for some reason, and I guess it's because of what happened, like the change in baseball rules and stuff like that, the the drama and et cetera over the steroid era. I just started watching basketball and football more. Plus, the Patriots started actually being a good team. And you gotta imagine they were never a good team up up and up until 2001. So I really wasn't even paying attention to them. Like I watched, you know, 2001 cool. I was paying attention. I was like, oh, this guy named Brady's here, right? But after 2003, 2004, and they just kept moving, I was like, yo, this team is actually really good. So I started making sure I was catching their games, paying more attention to them. Um, and I started waning from watching as much baseball. And mm. I was watching more basketball um, and football. Because the, the, the luster of the game had, had changed a little bit. Even with in, – and here's the thing. I was still catch Barry Bonds doing his Barry Bonds things, but at the same time I knew that it was what? everything's juice they kept talking about stuff being juice and not being fair and etc and like i told you i'm a ken griffey fan and he was never juiced i was always mm -hmm. like man that was kind of messed up because my guy was doing it the right way and he wasn't getting but it was fun to watch right yeah um and i'm not gonna lie i was i was a little so i was kind of sour about that um and then he had to leave he went to the reds and stuff like that and I understood why and all the stuff that's going on because i understand how the game works but i was like man i wanted him to to stay and retire with the mariners and um, all this other good stuff but it is what it is we got Alex Rodriguez for a couple of years which was cool um, and then when he left and he became juiced up then I kind of just was like man everybody's juiced up man I want to see people I want to see people play um, the game the way I played it when I was growing up and what I watched growing up with people just using their natural talents and skills but it was very exciting and I can't I can't take that away from it it was a very exciting time. Like I said, my mom was watching it with me and I never seen, <laughs> I can't get that back. So those are my earliest baseball memories before, you know, from that time getting up to the present, um, how I fell in love with the game, why I like watching the game. Um, like I said, we talked about this before. I'm a big, big fielding guy. Love defense. I like watching good pitching. Um, love watching good pitching. That chess game uh, between the pitcher and the darn hitter. And working with the catcher, like the sink, like when you watch somebody in sync and they're doing their job well, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, and I, I, like I said, I, I don't think even now, right? I, I'll tell people like that because 
I was teasing my brother. I was like, man, I'm going back to what I was doing when I was younger. I'm watching wrestling and baseball again. He started teasing me because he's, <laughs> he's like, I know it's fake. I know it's the wrestling fake, but it's funny, right? And the rocks came back, so I got to look at yep. it a little bit. And then, um, and then like I told him with baseball, I was like, yo, because I actually got time to sit down and watch it now. And plus, ba- basketball sucks. And we're gonna talk about this on our arbitrary conversation. Basketball has turned into the steroid era of baseball. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, it has changed. Like the competitive nature of the game is not the same. It's not what I grew up liking and watching during the. Um, I mean, you got to imagine growing up during the era of of seeing people like Jordan compete and stuff like that. It's just not the same. So they're competitive in baseball. There's there's um, there's parity. They're good play. Like you got stars on every team now again, and it's cool to watch it. And so I'm back to watching baseball. I mean, like before we, like I have, um, I got MLB Network, and so um, I get the strike zone. I get to watch all that stuff, right? So I can watch everything at once, and I can see all all the games I want to watch, out of market stuff. And, and that was one of the things too, growing up that sucked. And I'll say this: I know this goes into the next question, but I, I just I can't help but segue. Rooting for the Mariners. Why do I root for the Mariners? Talk about it. That's weird. Yeah, because this is weird. Because, of course, from New Haven, Connecticut, dad's Yankees fan, all them Boston fans, right? You'd be like, all right, you, at least you're going to be a Mets fan, right? Nah, nah, G, nah. It's all about Ken Griffey Jr. You got to imagine, like, me growing up during that time. And like I said, we were – we literally were tying ourselves to the players. Like, we were trying to – like, I hit – my hitting stands is like Ken Griffey Jr.'s hitting stands. My 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 little um my P my P teachers and my and, and the coaches that when when I was trying to play, um and like I said I didn't get a chance to play um school ball, uh but they would say man you can't hit like that that's not gonna work I said no it works for him and it looks good when he hits it looks smooth yeah, <laughs> so these things I thought you know I was really enamored with it and so um just following him and then knowing his father. And their connection, I thought that was always really cool. I really was like was. seeing a good father son dynamic, man. Because I, because I, I'm not gonna lie, especially coming from where I come from, I like seeing that. Because um, my father, he he's excellent, excellent, dope. Um, but there was a period in time when he wasn't there all the time, and so watching that father son dynamic, I was really happy about it. And then, of course, when my father coming back in life, I was happy. It made it's something that I always like to look at and see. Um, one of my favorite podcasts that I watch outside of what we normally do is a father son podcast because I like watching the dynamic of them working together. Um, and so, I mean, my father and I we have a good relationship, of course, and especially now. But um, I, that's one thing I like seeing. And so, um, seeing that, seeing how he played, his style, the swag. Um, and then the rest of the team that was around him. I mean, we had a big unit. I mean, there was like, there were, we had a larger than life team and it was tucked away and you didn't really get to see it. And so one of the things Kevin used to always tease me about this is with all, with, because I watched all these Seattle teams. It's like, man, we got to stay up so late to watch your games. Cause he was sitting and watch the games with me. Right. And he'd be mm-hmm. angry about it. So the cool thing about the Mariners was they got day games. So I can watch them during the day. Yeah. The Supersonics, unless it was a Sunday game, it's at night on TNT. The game starts at 10, 10, 30. So the only time I get to watch their games was on Fridays. So Good think point. about it. That's what I'm saying. I wasn't I wasn't even paying attention to it. But with baseball, I can keep following baseball because I can catch their games because they were early. I can catch them um, early in the evenings. Of course, on Saturdays, not a problem. Um, and I could watch day games. And so I was sitting there and I could watch their games and follow my team. Um, So... That's one. That's the reason why reasons why I rooted for the Mariners because um, Ken Griffey Jr. and Randy Johnson, Edgar Martinez. These are the people I was following. These folks and watching their their come up from how they got to the league and how they developed and how they stayed together for such a long period of time. That's that's another difference too. They stayed together for a pretty good amount of time. They um, did, especially right. as a child, like you don't that doesn't really occur that much anymore uh and so i i think that's one thing that made me a really hardcore fan um now we've had some very lean years recently um uh, up until up until like last two years we finally got us a guy we finally got us a guy mm-hmm. i'm not gonna lie that's one of the reasons why too i'm so happy to go back and watch because i was like oh we have somebody that we can work with and i told my brother though, i was like please don't let him steal him so um man when we got julio rodriguez yes sir 
I was so excited because it's not like like pitching wise. I mean, pitching wise, we're cool. Um, we go up and down. Everybody goes up and down pitching, but you have to have a star. Um, you got to have somebody that brings juice to the team. And a lot of times that's going to be in your fielders and who's batting. Um, Cause and like I said, I'm a defense guy. I like defense. So yeah, I want pitches to be good. I want to play. I want good defense. Right. But you have to have somebody. And like I said, for such a long time, we have not had a Ken Griffey S type player on our team. And it's crazy. And so when we got him, I, it just made my day. And so I was like, yo, I got to follow this guy. I got to know his backstory. I need to know where he, how did he get here? Where did he come from? And this is another thing too, that I thought was funny. Um, and I've been watching this, uh, for of course because you know pay attention to the sport in the league is that a lot of the players of color always come from overseas now we don't have a lot of players of color <clears throat> from the states yeah and um and so I, I realized and i recognize that um but at the same time i don't have any hate towards it i ain't got no problem with it i'm happy i'm always happy because i'd rather see the players of color than not see any at all right um because at the end of the day, I always tease about this just with black culture in general. We're a diaspora. We we span the globe. We're everywhere. Yep. And um, as long as as I like to see um, us do well wherever we come from, I have no problem with that. And then with baseball, too, baseball does better <clears throat> when it has a good mix of talent. Um, when you have everybody in there, um, you bring the best of the world together. And it's one of the it's one of the sports in America where you can actually say it's a world sport um, outside of, you know, of course you have so soccer, but that's different. That's in a different um, hemisphere, but you're talking hockey, football and basketball, and we call them world champions. And they probably got like five, six people from different places. Yeah. Baseball people come from anywhere. They be from everywhere. It doesn't matter. And, uh, and that's, what's cool. That's what I always liked about baseball. It doesn't really matter your background you can learn how to play the game um even even if you don't have and i know in in the states and know we talked about this on our podcast too um just going in into um just love of baseball but it can be an expensive sport but as i growing up i'm gonna tell you like this man if you want to play it you'll play it and you won't make it expensive you'll you'll make make it work and he comes from those kind of humble beginnings and yeah that's one thing i like about about him and his story um and i was really attached to it and I, I like how he plays the game i like his enthusiasm with the game he does do it in a really clean way i would say it's not too braggadocious but there's just enough swagger in it um that makes it look good and i know we discussed that issue with why a lot of why a lot of us don't want to play the game because we don't think we can be out there swaggadocious um but i do think that there is a balance because not that i'm a <sighs> I'm not a, 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 a starch like purist, but I do think you should have gamesmanship. And this isn't any sport. You should be able to go out there, play the game respectfully. You can show your talent. I think you should be able to um, be exciting and et cetera. Like I said, I watch wrestling. God darn it. So I can't act like I don't think you can go out there and, <laughs> and do your thing. Right. But at the same time, you shouldn't be looking to demean your opponent. That takes the gamesmanship out. So, Anything up to the point of demeaning, you're cool. Just don't demean your opponent. That's my big thing. And that's where I think baseball has to understand. It has to be more lenient in order to make sure it keeps a younger crowd attracted to it. Because um, I'll tell you a little story. My coworker, she was showing me her uh, son's, uh, his little league pay, uh, baseball pictures for the year, right? Mm -hmm. And they had like lights behind them, smoke and stuff like that. And they were looking all bad behind and stuff like that. Like, oh, shoot, they look dope. And um, one thing she's telling me is that um, her son, his coaches, they really have to stress to, this, to, the, to the young kids that you can be yourself up to a point um, because like he deals a little bit, he'll have a little bit of a bad attitude if he does something bad, doesn't get what he's supposed to get, um, has an error or is not in a position that he wants to be in because he wants to be a catcher and they keep trying to play him at shortstop and pitch. And um, they're trying to get him to understand and basically you got to go do your job. So yeah. even like, recently with, with Mookie Betts he's a right fielder came out to play second base and now you see they're going to put him at short shortstop stop, yeah they're like whoa whoa yeah. <laughs> you gotta play your because it's baseball you got to do your job um I'm a Bill Belichick guy so you know I believe that 
you got to go do your job. You have to be in your spot. And so that's one of the cool things about baseball. And I think I don't want to lose that part, but I do want people to be able to be themselves. Like, I don't think that the shield of the MLB should outshine or as they like to say, because baseball is a little different, the brand of the team. Because like the Yankees, that's a brand. Yeah. And Red Sox is a brand. The Braves, a brand. The 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 uh what is it? The um the Angels, it's a brand, especially the Dodgers, a brand. And so there's a certain idea that comes along with these teams. Even with Seattle, it has a brand to it. There's a certain mystique based on what was created in the, in the 90s. And so you have to carry it a little bit. And I understand that part. Um, but at the same time, you got to let these young folks do their thing and be themselves because it's, all it's going to do is make the sport better. And I watch, I've witnessed hockey trying to do that and they're trying their best because they don't want to die. Right. And so they're trying to bring in the youth to play. They have these initiatives where they actually take former players, couple them with the local um, teams to bring youth into experience hockey firsthand. So they teach them how to skate. Um, and these are not what you would consider not normal hockey fans. We're talking about females, minorities, uh, people from outside of the, the normal culture. They're bringing them in so that they can see um, how it works. And I think with baseball, they have to make sure they give those same efforts uh, to keep it an open sport, man. Like sandlot ball is a thing because everybody can play like there's a whole this movie's about it because it was dope, man. Like you cried yeah. at the end of Sandlot with the dog <laughs> but it was the whole camaraderie that it created and it showed how like this kid who was out of place through the through the sport of baseball was able to become one of the game and um i, I think they got to keep that alive man it, it, it makes baseball cool um so I, I hope that continues but um back on track my fault you know i will talk all day back on track so uh what were some of your favorite mariners moments all right so favorite favorite mariners moments I would have to say, um, all right, so this is this is an interesting one because we we had this is gonna be this is gonna be difficult. Um, for me, I would say, of course, I, I like I, I like watching Ken Griffey Jr. break his little records and chase after the home runs. That was dope. That was dope. Um, I thought that was excellent. Our Doing well in the playoffs is always amazing. Um, um, in the 90s, we had some really good playoff runs, um, things that I like. But I like I really like watching um, the big unit yeah. get them games and perfect. Look, look, I'm telling you, man, I really like watching the big unit work on, on, a, um, on a no-hitter or a perfect game and when he would get them. I'll tell you one of the coolest moments two that I liked about because again I like I like watching defense um but this is just a, an interesting one I like when he blew the bird up yeah me too that's like some <laughs> that was a Haley's comment moment right there that's never going to happen again it's never going to happen again that's why I knew he was different I said yeah. no he's not human <laughs> he's not human um but yeah that's um I, I think that that was one of, that was one of my favorite moments um but one second and i want to make sure i'm not crazy on this one make sure i'm not crazy sure oh oh yeah all right so what what i'll i had to make sure i'm not 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 wild on this so i always like when my team does good against my father's team so we had a 13 inning shutout versus the yankees fun because then i could go and talk trash and it was what defense all defense it's just us playing baseball extremely well extremely well and that was last year's august 9th i like games like that and this is what's weird because people are like but you like ken griffey jr i'm like yeah because he got sweet swing and i like watching him hit the ball and it's fun right but i love defense so um i like seeing stuff like that that's that was a good moment for me um with our team i like watching us play the game proper um and then I'm trying to think my because specifically, I don't know. That's a sad moment though. I like all right. So I know um with Ken Griffey, he when his father, but this is just a Ken Griffey thing. I like when his father came and they did his um his speech when he was retired. 
um, that made my day. And I thought that was dope. That was really, really cool. And that's not like a specific Mariner. It's a Mariners player, yeah. um, but not a specific moment. But um, that was, I like, I like stuff like that. I thought that was really good. Uh, I think it was good for the game and it was good for the culture and for us to see mm-hmm. um, as well, just to see that, that familiar um, link and how it ended. Cause I mean, he's hall of fame, man. Um, so I was happy when he got into the hall of fame. That was one of my favorite things that I, I think watching, cause I watched him my entire childhood Mm -hmm. and you know the kid was no longer a kid and it made me actually feel old because (laughs) i watched him well every time watching him i mean i you know i i never you don't think about your players that you watch growing up becoming old and um yeah man that's not one of the things that that i that i would see i never actually thought i would actually watch him retire which is crazy to think but as a kid you're watching you think these people play forever and they don't um so yeah, I, I would say the the bird blowing up and and then Ken Griffey Jr. getting enshrined. I think those are my two favorite moments. Man, and the fact that so much of his career was riddled by injuries, and he still managed to yeah. put, put up the numbers yeah. that he put up. I Come mean, on. I maintained that had he stayed healthy, I honestly think he would have got eight hundred home runs. No, easy, easy, easy. And here's the thing: again, this is why I'm angry about it. He never took steroids. Yeah. He wasn't a juice. If he had used steroids, he would have stayed healthier. Yeah. And that's the crazy part. That's the reason why most people, and, and this is, that's the reason why most people take steroids. It's not that they're all, all trying to like cheat the game, but it helps you recover. Yes. It repairs muscle fiber. It makes sure that you your body doesn't fall apart. Um, And watching him play, and that's one of the things, I guess, like the tragedy of it is he played clean and his body fell apart. Yeah. And that sucks, but I'm not gonna get angry about that too much. But yeah, man, that's not cool, man. Like I had to watch <laughs> that, and I was just like, "Juice it up, man! Take some AG, wrestle that yeah. cream, that cream, <laughs> <laughs> that cream and clear on the legs." Like, but um, I'm, I'm happy he played the game the right way because at the end of the day, you aren't gonna be able to put any asterisks besides any of his numbers. Um, and he's gonna be, like I said, we'll be able to keep talking about him in a positive manner. And he never was a bad player. Um, he played the game right. He never was negative. Um, he didn't take anything that he wasn't owed. And so, yeah, man, love that guy. I love him. 100%. So who were some of your favorite non-Mariners players? Ah, ah. All right, so this is funny. All right, so favorite non-Mariners players. And I know I kept saying this because, all right, <clears throat> I just got to say this guy because this guy was just amazing. He should have just kept playing this way. Shouldn't have played football. Bo Jackson. That man was a machine. He should have never played football. He should have mm-hmm. just kept playing baseball. He'd still been, he'd still been here. He'd have been amazing. But outside of that, I would say um, I love, um, and this is because I, I like how, I like the camaraderie of what they did. Um, so Manny Ramirez, Ortiz, love their camaraderie. I love how they played. Um, you can even put Pedro in there. I just like how he looked um, with that team. They were, they were really fun to watch. Um, I liked, um, because of being in this era, in this area and having friends who are big Atlanta Braves fans, um, I, I have to say Maddox. I love Maddox. Yeah. He's my um, all time favorite pitcher. The best, the best. He was a, he was such a, he was a, he was a gentleman killer. He was a, yep. <laughs> A Not gentleman no, killer. No overpowering fastball. Nah, just man. Location, location, location. Control, control, control. And I like I like watching that because that is the chess game. Um also uh, I would have to say, good lord. This is a recent why, why did this jump out of my head? Because I was just thinking about this. Good lord. Um uh darn it. I'm, I'm trying to think so. Um I have my old players. I'm thinking about somebody um, recent that I that I really like that that stood out in my head, and this is bothering me. Um, I just had this in my head. I was just thinking about it, and I start talking about Darren Maddox. Um, good lord, good lord, good. Lord. Oh, Mookie Betts, man. You know I love Mookie yeah. Betts. Guy like Mookie Betts and Jackie Bradley. Um, I, I will say this because, of course, being South Carolina, um, we have a very good crop of college players that come out of here and so we get to see a lot of these people actually go to the league 
Um, yeah. And they win championships and they become really good players. So um, that's the reason I, I'm not going to lie. I don't know why we don't watch more baseball, especially in this day. Like we should be watching a lot of baseball. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, I, I really like watching um, those two players. I like watching them. Um, who else did I? Um, there's somebody else I wanted to mention. Make sure I don't mess this up. There's somebody else I wanted to mention. Speaking of, players, I mean, I'd be remiss to say. Go ahead. I was going to say, speaking of players we didn't mention, specifically Mariners players we didn't mention. Yes, you mention Ichiro. You ready? This is funny. I loved watching Ichiro, right? But mm-hmm. I didn't fall in love with him like everybody. Okay. I, what, I don't. What, and, and, and what maybe, was it about it? You remember what I told? <laughs> we were talking about this before, um, uh, on our on our podcast. Um, I didn't, I, I couldn't, I, here's the thing. I like what he was doing, but it was when we sucked. Uh, it was when we sucked. Yeah. And this is part of it. It's like, I, I want to see, I want to see you do well, but I want to see it transmit to success. Right. I like to see the success part of it. Right. Great player. Mind you. Amazing. I can't talk to trash. Great player. But, um, it was just during a bad era and, he came at that point where we needed we needed him, um, but his his success did not translate to um, to our team doing well, and I, I think that was my issue. Um, outside of that, man, I mean, because especially what he did over in Japan, like he's amazing, amazing. That's the reason why I went and got, got him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think maybe it's too what they what they say. I'm uh, a prisoner of the moment um, on that. I can't really blame him for that. They the team broke down around him. They took a lot of players that could have stayed with him to make the team good. Um, and then he had to, I mean, he ended up coming back to retire with us, but he he had to go and try to seek success elsewhere to make it work. And I always like, man, they always take our players, man. And that's probably yeah. I was probably I'm probably more butt hurt than anything with him because they always <laughs> they always gotta the way baseball works, those big market teams, they always poach on the small market teams. When you have talent, they don't let you sit and develop talent. So um you don't get to watch. Um it's 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 rare. So in some cases, it might be a rarity for you to see a small market team sustain um success for more than four or five years. Um in the sense of staying in a high winning um winning record because i was looking at this um before we got on and i was just like looking at like the the top winning team since 2013 and um you're looking at like the dodgers even even cleveland uh indian the the guardians i mean i messed that up the the guardians um as well were in that um that realm uh and the yankees of course but you're you're looking at it and it's you you realize okay these are these are teams that got money and um, I always like rooting for the for the underdog, and so with man, I'm not gonna lie, I probably should be giving him a little bit more love than what I do, but it's just the worst. It was the worst time for me watching our team just just not do well. Um, but he was doing his thing, so I, I will say that. I guess I should be nicer about that. I need to stop being butt hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now we're going to get into the five question segment. So the first and last question are the same question I ask every guest I have on here. Questions mm-hmm. two through four are one hundred percent random. So question number one: What okay. would DJ and what's go to school lunch items? Oh, um, all right, this is gonna be weird. So I went all right. So I'll do Salisbury steak, Man, mashed potatoes. Let's go, and and gotta get the corn because other stuff, eh. And even though corn's not a vegetable, eh, I'm gonna go with the corn because it's safe. And then uh, usually you know, on those days they would always have a piece of cake, so get some cake with it, and then um, some chocolate milk. Makes no sense. I wouldn't do that now, but back in the days, that's what it would be: chocolate milk. Yep. Man, cats cats don't talk about the Salisbury steak. <laughs> they don't. It Boy, was legit. They, that Salisbury it's... steak used to hold my family down legit. on Friday nights. Come on, <laughs> that Swanson's. That Salisbury steak yes. with the mac with the Swanson's yes. mac and cheese, boy, that was oh, that was that's dip. That Swanson's the Swanson's, yeah, mac and cheese. They don't make it the same way they used to make it, uh, but back in the day, who Lord Jesus, it was good. It was yeah. worth it. It was worth it. Uh, question number two: What would your walk up music be if you were a baseball player? 
Oh man, you know what it would be? What's that? <laughs> it's gonna make sense because it's in my head. It'd be the rocks theme music when he okay. comes out. Yeah. Oh, that music is so ant, man. It be... And you walking up to the bat, man. Come on. Yep. <laughs> That'd be the jam. Yeah, that's that's what I would want. That's what I want. Uh question number three. What's the first album you bought with your own money? All right, so this is like a all right. I had we had a purchase that was a dual purchase, like we put our money together. That's one separate. I'm gonna give you both of them though, so it makes sense. Okay. So this gonna be a whack album. It's whack, but I'm gonna tell you, it was Ray J. Wait a minute. <laughs> no kidding. Ray J's wait a minute. Man, I don't know what's wrong. We were kids, we didn't know no better. We That's the joint he did with Little no Kim. Better. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So hey, that, I'm not mad that. At that. Yeah, we bought that. And then um outside of that. Um, so I bought Nas because that was my favorite rapper. So I bought Stillmatic. That's a better record, by in my opinion. Man. I yeah. did better at that one. I did better. <laughs> uh, question number four: What's that one food that instantly transports you to your childhood? Hmm, it's a good one. Um, I would go with uh, okra and tomatoes. Okra and tomatoes. Less. Talk yep. about it because that's where it's from. That's where it's from. It's from childhood, man. My yes, my father made it for us, but the reason why he made it for us because that's where his grandma would make. And my grandmother, she is from the Low Country, and the folks are from they're from Georgetown, Plantersville, and um, of course we got we got Geechee folk, Geechee in our root, and rice with everything. Yes, and one of the best things to have rice with, man, that okra and that tomato, and you can make it different ways. People got variations, but. Got to give me some okra. Got to give me some tomato. Let's stew in there. Stew tomato is amazing. I could eat that all day long. And if you put the smoked meat in it, oh my Lord Jesus. Talk about it's full, it. Full out meat. It's a full out meal. Don't give me a piece of cornbread. I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to be going to sleep. But that that is the that's where it's supposed to be at. And people look at me like, what? That's what you're like. Yeah, that's what I want to eat. Yeah. So eating vegetables. My, and I'll tell you this story. This is funny. So my grandmother one day, we're living with her and you know she's doing grocery shopping and stuff and bringing the stuff in and um and so she was geeky so she said like she had all these like different words and she would speak the language and stuff to us and we were looking at her crazy um but one of the things that she told us about was the difference between vegetables and vegetables vegetables yes <laughs> you know what they are <laughs> My grandparents did joking. the same exact same thing. thing. I thought she was lying, right? No, she's serious. So a rutabaga, okra, them are vegetables. Yep. That stuff that come in the can, and sweet peas, that's vegetables. That's that other stuff. But the real hardcore, like the stuff you have to process. And that's what I understood what it meant. You got to process. It has a lot of fiber in it. It's usually really good for you. It's rich in vitamins. You don't think about it like that, but you're like, oh, so that that wheat stuff that's vegetables but the real stuff that's vegetables, vegetables. so you turn up turn up greens yes all that stuff vegetables and i learned i love me some vegetables and my wife knows that i love vegetables a oh too man god almighty you took me back with that man. <laughs> man then the last question what's the last thing that really made you laugh uh gosh okay dang it sounds kind of bad but because I mean, I laugh a lot, man. I like laughing. Laughing is good for the soul. So I was talking to this um this elderly gentleman on the phone that like made me laugh hard. Um, because I was laughing last night, my brother, we were having a good time. But um, there's this element elderly gentleman I was talking to on the phone in in the midst of my job doing my work, and I'm getting him scheduled. And you know, older folks will sit and start talking because that's what they do. They want to sit and talk, they ain't in a rush, they retire. And um he was talking about being at the Walmart trying to find some, he was trying to find some, what do you call it? Some stir fried chicken. And he couldn't find it in the freezer section. And so this lady walked up to me and said, you know that lady from WIS, the blonde one, and she be having makeup on with the red lipstick? Boy, she be looking good. He said, I think this lady walked up to me and <laughs> she kind of looked like her. <laughs> and I said, hey, are you that lady from the news? And she said, no. He said, well, if you were, I'd give you a hug. But since you aren't, can you help me find 
find his uh, stir fried chicken. <laughs> And then he started going into the diatribe of why he shouldn't be looking at the lady because she's going to make him sin and he don't want to go to hell. <laughs> and he was talking for like 15 minutes about this lady and how fine she was and stuff. I said, man, I got to get off the phone with you, bro. And he heard me laughing, right? And I'm up here. I'm up here. I'm cutting up, man. T tears coming out of my eyes and everything. And dude, he's so serious about it. He's like, oh, man, I'm so sorry to me to hold you on the phone so long. But yeah, that was a good laugh. I needed that that, that day because... It was a wild day. It was crazy. It was really busy. And so he was my break from all that man just talking about how fine that lady was in the store that he shouldn't have been looking at. Trying he to shouldn't have been looking all at. All he her. wanted was some some stir fry. God bless. Stir him. fry. That's it. <laughs> so if there's anything you want to plug or promote, the floor is yours. Um, yeah, man. I know I was doing it during the episode, but I have man, we always got to promote the podcast, um, the Hilltop Glove podcast. Uh, it's available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Google, anywhere you can get um, digital media. Uh, specifically on YouTube, you will find the actual video. So if you like watching video, you're going to find it on YouTube. Other than that, you'll get the actual audio elsewhere. Um, I also want to plug our new um, endeavor, which is Arbitrary Conversations. That's going to be on our Patreon. We do have a Patreon. The links for that are going to be in our um, biography of our all of our um, pages that are linked um, to the podcast. So you'll be able to see that. Um, we will have little clips posted so you can get some insight of what we may be talking about. Uh, so if you're interested, you can definitely join that and link into the Patreon and help support our movement and what we're doing. Also, um, I have to do this because we've been doing this all week. There is a young lady who is uh, 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 who, who we posted this week for our podcast. And I want to promote her. And you got to meet, you were, um, you met her on the way out when you were doing yours, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Foxworth, because she's actually doing a GoFundMe. And she owns the only black brick and mortar bookstore in South Carolina. And that's a darn shame. I didn't even realize that there was only one. <laughs> And so it is located in Goose Creek, but her um her bookstore is called, and I don't want to mess it up. Let me tell you what it is. Look at my stuff. One second. Wait, wait, wait. Be nice, be nice, be nice. I'm always bad at this stuff. Give me one second. Cause I I, I gotta plug her on this because um I want to make sure that this type of stuff is supported because we don't have much of this in our community. But what the cool thing about the bookstore is it brings people together. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I thing, like that. Yeah. And the wild thing is I actually met her like two or three, three years prior yeah. because yep. she had a, um, uh, this guy, a Terrence, this guy, a Terrence uh, Elmore. He had a uh -huh. book signing at that store. And that was my first time going in there. And I saw she was in there. I was like, that's where I remember her from. See, come on. For Turning Page Bookshop. Yes. So Turning Page Bookshop um, is in uh, Goose Creek, South Carolina, 604 St. James Avenue, Suite I. Please go and check out Miss Valinda down there, uh, Miss Valinda Miller and, and her bookstore. Because one thing we can't have more of in our... Man, that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with baseball was books about baseball. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we can't have um, less of are books. We need to read. We need to make sure that we're keeping ourselves and our tool up here sharp. 100%. One way you can lift weights with that is with books. Um, it's good getting this content. And I have nothing wrong with this content. I love this content. I do this content. So I love it. But every once in a while, I step away, read you a book, or at least get a book on tape, do mm -hmm. something like that. So um Give yourself your, your your mind a chance to work. So I want to promote that. Um, and of course, um, got to promote you. Got to promote Danny Foxworth, man, and all the cool stuff that he does with his podcast, man. I love the fact that you have a podcast about baseball, and it's something I don't get. I mean, that's why I was nerding out so bad uh, when we were when we were speaking, man, because mm -hmm. I don't get to talk with people about baseball because people think it's, it's corny. They think I'm being boring. I'm like, nah, baseball is dope, bro. It's it dope. is. Um, like, look at the gear you're wearing, man. It's dope stuff, man. Hey, got to um, gotta rep um, my... So, uh, so, yeah, gotta you got to rep Texas. My uh, defending on, World Series champion. Texas. I know. Thank you very you're, much. You're rating right, so I can't talk. I'm going to have to give, them, give, give <laughs> praise. I'm going to give praise. Give praise. So, of course, at the plate with Danny Foxworth. And then also your other podcast, Since We Last Spoke, 
Both of them are excellent. I've listened to both of them. Like Thank I said, so we've much. actually had some of the same guests. And um, it's cool seeing the different perspective and how you speak with them in the, in the room you give people to talk. Because I know you let me run my mouth today. <laughs> and I appreciate it, man, because mm -hmm. a lot of times people don't don't actually let, let the person talk. So it's always good um, to be in the midst of that. Outside of that, man, um, I would say just be on the lookout for um, – some other things that we got going on. I'll put this one thing out um, at the end of April, April 28th, I believe it is to be exact. We will be at the um, Black Clue Truck Festival in Charleston. Oh, um, y'all are going to be out there? No, yeah, April 26th. So April 26th through April 28th. Um, because the gentleman that runs it, he was my old partner down in Charleston. We used to actually Marcus Hammond. do the club circuit. Yeah. yeah. So we used to actually work together. I DJ for him. And so um, one of the things that we did when we had him on the podcast, and we've already been talking about this, is just be going out there, um, setting up and trying to do some live content for uh, the food truck festival Tight. and then also getting some stuff to them. Po yeah. Because po you got to support, man. We want to support and want to make sure that we get uh, the word out about it. So uh, I do want to make sure everybody knows about that going on. You can actually get tickets for it now. I believe they're already up. Um, and he's been doing some uh, visits to radio stations and et cetera to push it. But I really want to make sure you all go and check out that because it is a cool cultural event. Black food culture is awesome. Yes. We're in the South. Why don't we celebrate it? And it's funny because everybody else celebrates our food culture outside of us. Like you go why anywhere else us? in the world, right? Yeah, why not? Why us? not they us? celebrate? Yeah, man. So I, I bought um, my tickets to, to that yesterday. See, that's what I'm saying, man. So yeah, man, make sure that's linked in there so that people can get at that because um, it can. It's on. It I know it grew faster than he intended. So this year it's going to be even better because the preparation is going to be there. Um, if you had any issues with it last year or worried about how things were going to be, you aren't going to see those same issues this year. And I know he discussed that on our podcast um, uh, that he well, I believe it was like episode 92. He discussed that, um, how they were fixing those things and how he actually went and did research on how other festivals work so he could make sure he fine tuned and geared it to be more successful than it was in the past. So yeah, I just want to make sure you big up to, to Marcus Hammond. I'm looking forward to that, man. I, I, I'm, oh, I'm just, I'm just so, I'm excited to. I'm gonna save my to calories. I'm gonna save my again. calories. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, man. Again. Yeah, we definitely gonna do that. Yeah, looking forward to it. So again, Hilltop Glove Podcast. Make sure y'all check them out. They do amazing, amazing content. And make sure that you check out since we last spoke with Danny Foxworth and my, and at the plate with Danny Foxworth. Make sure you like, download, and subscribe my podcast. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm at Danny Fox with 843, and you can find all the video versions of all my episodes on there. And for DJ and what and myself, this has been another episode of At the Plate. And until next time, y'all be good. Three strikes. Hey.